Hi there, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, where we women over 50 come together to help each other look and feel our best at 50, 60, 70, and beyond. Okay, I am so excited to have you here with me in this video where we answer the question, can Botox help you live longer or at least healthier? But first, I wanted to let you know that my outfit and jewelry, everything is listed below the video. And if you're not yet a subscriber and you would like to join the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you'll subscribe and or give this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's get into this. And the reason I am doing this video is two or threefold. The first is that I saw a video with Dr. Brad Stanfield, who is an MD and he's very into the science behind what works. He mentioned on his channel that there was a research study that came out and it met all the rigorous criteria of a good research study. This research study studied about 300 men and women and looked at them in terms of their amount of facial wrinkling. And the study ended up showing that at least in terms of the women, those women with less in the way of facial wrinkling actually had less in the way of cardiovascular risk. They had less risk for high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, that kind of thing. And he was specifically talking about Botox and saying, if having a less wrinkly looking face does produce health benefits, why in the world are we putting down Botox? And he mentioned this, which is something that I totally agree with. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding out there about what Botox is and what it actually does. Botox is short for botulinum toxin. And basically that is a little bit of toxin that your esthetician or MD can put into various areas of the face to basically freeze the muscles or at least stop them from working so aggressively. And I have used Botox since it became FDA approved back in 2002. So I have had 20 years of Botox and I get really frustrated when in the comment section, somebody will say, well, she only looks good because she has a face full of Botox. And the implication is that everything about how I look is due to the Botox. And I think that's a misunderstanding. Like these fish lips that you see, that's not Botox, that's filler. The puffy face that you see, that's fillers. That is not Botox. All Botox does is, it smooths the dynamic wrinkles that you have going on your face, meaning specifically wrinkles like all across the forehead and in the 11 area and in the crow's feet area. However, I have stopped using Botox in my crow's feet area because I've been using the Nera there and I think it really does help. Also, Botox can be used in the marionette line area and a little bit above the lips. I've never done that. And Botox can also be used to soften the platysmal bands. And I can't even do it because for the first time ever, I tried having Botox in my platysmal bands and let me know in the comment section if you'd like to go along with me on that visit and see how it worked out. But I think it really does help soften them because as we get older, especially for those of us who lift weights, which is me, those long muscles on the neck, the platysmal bands can really get pronounced. And I really can't do it that much now. But before I had Botox about a month ago, I could really make those bands prominent and I was getting a lot of wrinkling on my neck. So I was really happy that when I had a little bit of Botox injected into those bands, they softened up and my neck looks a little less wrinkly. It's not going to look perfect because I just turned 64 years old. I do not have a perfect face, but the Botox does help. And basically again, Botox just softens the lines in those areas. When I was in my 30s, I was a local TV news reporter and I would do a lot of interviews. And when I was interviewing or even when I was on camera, for some reason, I would always really lift my eyebrows and I had this huge line that went across my forehead. And I thought that line was going to be permanent at like 33 years old. I started using Botox about 21 years ago when it became legal. So that would be 54, 44, maybe about age of 43, something like that. And within 10 days after having Botox injected, all of your large static lines just kind of soften. And they softened so much at that young age in my 40s that you really couldn't see them anymore. And for years, I just had the forehead lines done and the 11 lines done. And sometimes in the comment section, someone will say, what can I do for these wrinkles on my forehead? What is the best thing that I can do for those wrinkles? And the best thing quite honestly is Botox injections and they're not cheap. And when you start out, you have them every three to four months. Now my Botox lasts a long time. I can get about six months on one injection of Botox. But if you have big deep lines and you want to soften them or eliminate them, Botox is absolutely the best thing for those deep lines. Now, getting back to the study that was done about those mature older women and the researchers looking at their facial wrinkling and comparing that with the amount of heart disease they had, the amount of cardiovascular disease, 
Basically, the women who looked less wrinkly tended to have less cardiovascular disease. And what Botox does over time is, since it is freezing those muscles from being able to make those deep lines, they are not able to be etched into your face as much. And over time, I am convinced that Botox actually does have a positive impact on your overall wrinkles because I've had 20 years of not furrowing my brow like I did up in the first 40 years of my life. And in his video, Dr. Stanfield did admit, he said, I don't know why it is that women with fewer wrinkles tend to do better in terms of their risk for cardiovascular disease, why they tend to be healthier in that area. And this is especially true because they adjusted in all of those, I think, 600 participants, they adjusted for smoking, they adjusted for sun exposure, they adjusted for body mass index as well. And in his video, Dr. Stanfield admitted, he said, I don't know why it is that the study showed that women with less wrinkling as they age, they also tend to have less heart disease. But he said one idea, and I think that this could be the case, is that when we look in the mirror and we see fewer wrinkles, we see kind of a younger looking face, we think, hey, we're still in the game. Let's go ahead and do the exercise. Let's eat well. Let's take care of ourselves. That was what he thought, and I personally think that could be the case too. And I believe I saw this play out in my own parents' lives. I will tell you a quick story, and that is that my parents are now both in their upper 80s. They're doing fine, but they're in their upper 80s. And when they were both about 65 and 66, I think dad was 66, they both had a facelift. They had the facelift on the same day. In fact, I waited for them, I cared for them, I saw them all through that surgery. And I will say that being 65 years old, right before that surgery, I was noticing that both mom and dad just seemed older, they seemed defeated. Dad would, while not shuffle around, he wasn't as energetic as he used to be, and mother just seemed kind of defeated by life. And you would think that my mother would be a Miss Glam kind of a person and into facelifts and all that, but my mother and father are the most down-to-earth people ever, and really, I was so surprised when they wanted a facelift because that does not seem like them. I miss makeup and into all this skincare. My mother has probably washed her face with soap every night of her life, and again, she's in her 80s, and she even wears very little makeup. But for some reason, at the age of 65 and 66, they did have a facelift. And it was amazing to me the difference before and after in their lives where before they had their facelifts, they seemed kind of older and dejected. They looked kind of washed up and like life had passed them by. They just didn't seem excited and optimistic about their lives. Well, fast forward maybe three weeks later when they recovered from their facelifts, oh my goodness. They were like two different sets of people. They joined a health club. They started to exercise. My mother started to lift weights. They really cared about themselves from the exercise standpoint. They really started to watch what they eat. Dad got more involved in a sport that he used to like. He used to love tennis, but with some hip problems and all, he couldn't do tennis anymore, a shoulder problem, but he started playing table tennis and he really got involved with that. And even in terms of their work, they own their own company but they started to take some risks, to get out there, to try some new things in their own company. It was like before the facelift, they had looked in the mirror and they'd seen an aging senior citizen and acted accordingly. And then after the facelift, they had fewer wrinkles, their face looked much better, and they thought, hey, I am young, I'm excited, and I'm ready to take on the world. And Botox doesn't pay me for this video. This is not a sponsored video. They don't even know who I am. But it always kind of amazes me when people have this very negative attitude about Botox. Now, I can understand that attitude about fillers because there is nothing that looks as bad as a woman who is overfilled. But with Botox, the only thing it does is it reduces large wrinkles and really kind of irons them out of your skin. And if you're like me and you have used Botox or even tried it a time or two, I am sure you get frustrated with people's very odd attitudes about Botox Basically what it does is if we want our skin care to reduce fine lines and wrinkles, Botox does exactly the same thing. And if you have used or currently use Botox, I would love to get your opinions about it in the comments section below the video or by the same token, if you would never use Botox, and that is absolutely fine. I'm not here to push my agenda on anyone else. In fact, I don't have a Botox agenda. I just know that it helps me feel better, but I would love to hear your comments about Botox in the comment section below the video, because one thing about 50 Plus Beauty is that we're a family of women who come together to have a discussion about aging and to age in the very best way we can. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and this is a practical means of weight control, actually. 
And I heard it from my friend Terry, her mother Sherry, who is a beautiful older lady. I wish I had a picture to show you, but she's just absolutely beautiful, very happy and healthy and doing well. And I think she just turned 90, which is just amazing. But Terry told me a story of how her mom had gained like five to seven pounds and she was feeling uncomfortable in her clothes and she really wanted to lose the weight. And so what she did was something that I thought I would share with you because I think it's just great. What she did was she stopped eating between meals. And how she did that was every time after a meal, she would go ahead and brush her teeth and then she would not allow herself to eat again until she had her next meal. And then after that meal, she would brush her teeth again. And that was her cue to stop eating until the next meal. And for me personally, I'm also up about five pounds right now. And I don't like that at all because my clothes are getting a little bit tight. But I'm doing several things to try to bring my weight back into my good weight range, which I want. And if you'd like to have a video about what I'm doing to lose that five pounds, just go ahead and mention that in the comment section below the video. But after Terry passed along what her mother was doing to lose her five pounds, I added that to my weight control efforts as well. And if you'd like to see some of the things I do to keep slim after 60, then I hope you'll hang around on the channel with me and watch my next video, which is either here or here.